Hello and welcome everyone. With this workshop, we are going to have a look at the new mount transistorized battery tools. My name is Adrian Auger and, and I am a technical seller. So in the previous workshops, we had a look at the EC and ECT series, which are current control and Coded tools. In this session, we are going to have a look at the equivalent in battery tools. So we have the EPT series, which are transistorized battery tools. You can see on the screen three different items. We have angle head type of tools, pistol grip, as well as a controller. The controller, as you can see, is basically a tablet and we will see how those items can work individually or together. So first, what's the same between the corded tools and the battery tools? Well, the same are 15 presets. We still have the 15 different strategies that we can allocate for the tools. So we have 15 different target torque, 15 different speeds, and 15 different angle windows. So basically, 15 different type of fastening. We also have the multi-sequence A and B. Multi-sequence will predominantly be used for soft joint application and helicoil application, where the tool will navigate through different steps, one by one, by itself with only one trigger event happening. The advanced parameters linked to the presets are the same as well with the counterclockwise step before the fastening happen, the prevailing torque management for thread cutting operation, a gauging torque management for threaded holes, as well as angle after torque up for torque plus angle strategies. The monitoring functions are the same as well. So we have obviously real time data coming from the tool for full traceability, as well as remote control and network communication. But then what does what do the battery tool bring in addition to the Cordy tools? Well, first, battery tools are independent and more flexible than Cordy tools to work around the state and walk around difference as well. We'll see that in a few minutes when we have a look at how the tool can work independently as standalone tools or they can work connected all together. The models have also changed to jobs where the tools will be um, able to interact with each other. And a key point here is that one controller can communicate with eight different tools at the same time. And this is a feature that will be very useful when it comes to job management. To make it simple, uh, job are a process control step so that the tool will work in a smart fashion all together. We also have more input output where on the coded version, we have eight input and eight outputs. Here we have 16 inputs and 16 outputs on the EPC controller, which communicates with the battery tools. Finally, we also saw in the previous workshops how to handle barcode reading devices and how to link those barcodes to different presets or models. The battery tools come with an integrated barcode reader, which will allow the users to scan the barcode directly using 
the tool without having to have a separate barcode reader. So let's jump right in now and let's have a look at the tool itself. So what we have now on the screen is the back of a pistol grip tool. We have the display at the back of the tool and we have on top LEDs indicating the status of the tool. So now it's blinking green, meaning that the tool is ready to work. Coming back to the screen, and this is going to be the first way the tool can work as a standalone tool. We have different information available here. On the top left, we have the preset number. So here we are set on preset one. We can easily navigate between the different presets by going up or down through the presets, but also through the multi-sequence B or A so that the operator can easily change the preset, change the strategy, depending on the fastening that's needed at this specific time. On the top right corner, we have the battery level. Just underneath, we have the target torque. So for preset one, target torque is 1.5 Newton meters. If we go up, we see that Target torque for preset two is one Newton meter. So we will see here what's the torque required for each preset, which is going to be a useful information for the operators. Going back to preset one, we have on the bottom right, the counting feature. So here, if we zoom in, we see that we have 10 here, which means we have 10 screws to count. And this is going to be either a count up or count down. So again, it's going to be a guide for the operators to know how many fastening is left to do on this fastening sequence. So we can navigate this way through the different presets, but we can also change some of the settings here directly using the buttons. Let's go to mode here. And now we have speed, torque, or back. So let's go to torque using the F3 button. And now we have preset number four. We have the target torque here, and we can increase it using the F4 or up button. And on the top right, still as a guidance, we have the torque that was set before we made any changes. And now in the middle, we have the torque that we are changing in real time. And if we want to apply this torque value to preset number four, we press on set. And now preset four is 1.2 Newton meters. We can do the same for the speed, and this is applicable for all 15 different presets. So this is the first way the tool can work as standalone tools. Now, you may have already at this stage some questions about how the tool is working. So feel free to write those down in the chat section, and we will address those questions and answer them at the end of the workshop when we uh, gather together. So again, this is the first way the tool can work as a standalone tool. The second way is going to be through the PC software and you will see it pop up on your screen now. So to connect to the software, it's easy, I just use the USB, micro USB connection on the tool, connect to the laptop, and then open the communication. And from here, we'll see the different settings that are included in the tool. So the 15 different presets with the target torque, 
the type of strategy to be used for the presets. So again, here we'll have access to very similar information to what's available on the EC and ECT coded controllers. And you will recognize that the structure is more or less the same. What's the same as well is that the software comes with the tool. So it's included with the tool, no license. You can install it on as many computers as needed on the factory. So 15 different presets. We have our advanced functions here. We have the controller information here. So all of those presets and parameters are available here from the screen. So we can change those parameters. And from here, from the software, we can also lock down the buttons at the back so that the operator will not be able to change those and we'll have to work with what we want them to have access to. So to do that, we can lock either only the mod button. So the operator cannot change the settings. In that case, they will only be able to navigate between the different presets or we can lock everything. And in that case, the operator has to follow what's on the tool at this time. So again, these tools work this way as standalone tools. So now let's have a look at how the tools can communicate as well with the controller. So for that, I will put the controller here and I will connect my tool directly to the controller. So by connecting the tool, we'll have a window popping up asking if we want to enable the Wi-Fi on the tool, if we want to set the same Wi-Fi um, parameters as what's set on the controller. We can set as well the IP address, dynamic or static. Save it, unplug the tool, power cycle it, and now it will connect to the controller. So while the tool restarts, let me give you a bit more information about the controller. You can see that it's a tablet. The tablet here, the controller is supported on a mounted mounting bracket. And what we don't see on the screen because it's behind here are the different ports. So we have two USB ports on the left hand side of the controller. So this USB port can be used to connect the tools. They can be used also to, as in this example, insert an access point device. So that will give us the possibility to generate a Wi-Fi network directly from the controller. And in that case, the tools will connect to the controller and to the Wi-Fi network directly from this access point. So once again, the controller will be able to manage up to eight tools at the same time. And we'll see how these tools can work all together or independently. Another port that we have is a HDMI port. So we can, in that case, expand the expand the display of the controller to a bigger screen as an example if needed and then on the right hand side we have a micro sd port that's going to record everything happening on the tool in real time so let's zoom a bit back on the controller now and let's navigate through the different menu. So 
the first one is going to be operation. And this is something that we will come back just in a bit. We have then the monitoring function. And you will see that for that, it's asking to select a tool. And selecting a tool is very straightforward. One. We scroll down, select the tool we want to communicate with, as an example, this one. And then we will have access to the graphic function. We will have access to the different IO that are linked to the tool, the error signal as well. So all the information related to that specific tool. Going back to the home screen, we will then have the possibility to um, display the other menu. And if you give me one second, I will show you how the controller looks like from the very starting point. So let's switch it off and on again. So we can see that the controller is now booting. Creating the Wi-Fi network from the access point. And now we are back on the main screen. So we can log in here and we'll have access to the different settings. So go to OK. And here we have different windows. We can manage operations. We can create and edit jobs, which is something that we will have a look at in a few minutes. We can change the parameters. So if we click on the parameters, again, it's asking us which tool we want to change. To do that again, we just scroll down. We can now see that both tools are connected to the controller. We can select this tool, which is in that case, the piece of grip that we were having a look at just earlier on. And now we have at the bottom are 15 different presets. So we can easily navigate between each of them. And we have access to all the different parameters for these presets directly on the screen. So again, torque control angle monitoring or angle control torque monitoring strategy, the target torque, the limit. So all these same parameters that we've been looking at for the last few workshops. Advanced feature, same again, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, the 15 different advanced features pages. On the controller here, we'll have a few more features than on the Cordy tool. So it can be as an example to lock the tool as soon as it goes out of the Wi-Fi network range, or we can set a timer for how long will the tool be allowed to work once out of the Wi-Fi range. We can obviously switch off the reverse button so that the operators will not be able to um, reverse or unfasten screws. We can change the calibration of the tool directly here, select which preset we want the tool to start with when it's powered on. And then on the right side, we have as well different parameters like the auto speed, fastening error. Uh, and here, same as we've seen earlier on, the LCD button lock. Do we want to the operator to have access to all the different buttons? Lock only the F1 button or lock all of them. We can also have different um, direction for each of the presets, just like on the Cordy tools. So we can have as an example, P9, preset nine counterclockwise and all the other presets working clockwise. So I will cancel that. 
we can change the torque unit. So for each tool, meaning that the controller will be able to manage tools that are working in Newton meter and other tools that are working in inch pound, as an example. And another feature that is available is going to be how many presets we want the operator to have access to. So this is something I'm looking for here. So what we can do is allow the operator to only have access to a determined number of presets. And then the operator would be able to use the F3 and F4 buttons on the tool to navigate only between those presets we want them to have access to. Multi-sequence is something that you are familiar with now. Again, multiple step, step in one trigger event. Network is the Wi-Fi network, just like when we plugged in the tool to the controller. Monitoring, this is where we have just like a few minutes ago, the graph, the IO. Remote control is going to see what's happening on the IO at the, on real time. System is going to give us some information about the controller, so the model, the software version, the serial number of the controller. The storage is going to show us how much space is left in the internal storage, but also on the SD card. So we see here uh, what's, what's left. And what we can see here that the space is going to be enough for years and years of working. And we have an interesting one here, file browser. So in this, this file browser, we can use the SD card to carry some files. And we will see the point of that when we talk about the jobs. So let's close it for now. And let's go to the operation window. So I'm going to clear this one. And now, the tools are ready to work. We can see on the top left that I have two tools connected right now to the controller. One is a pistol grip. The other one is a angle head type of tool. So I'm going to make a few rundowns and see how the results are displayed on the controller. So let's change the view. Let's change a view to this one. So we have now the pistol grip. I'm going to make it fastening. So we can see that the information is going directly to the screen. And if we look at the background, we'll see that I can use at the same time, the angle head type of tool. And the information will be as well sent to the screen in real time. So once again, the controller will be able to manage these tools all together at the same time, eight different tools. The information that we see now on the screen, which is the fastening data, which is what's required for traceability, is saved on the SD card, but can also be sent through the RS-232 and Ethernet ports that are coming with the EPC-10 controller. These communication ports will communicate in Modbus and open protocol uh, standards. We see as well that um, we have the barcode information. So we, if we had here a barcode to scan, we will be able to display this information and use the barcode to select which preset we want to use. 
So this is going to be very convenient for operations where several tools are required to work together at the same time. But now there is another way we can manage those tools and we are going to see how right now. So in the setting functions, we have different features. We can count up or down. We can have the screw number counted per step or per job. How do we want to select the jobs? And this is where I really want to highlight is going to be the job. The jobs are basically process control software included in the tool. And they will allow specific tools to work at specific steps. We can select those job through the IO uh, or directly through the screen here. So for now, we can see that the jobs are disabled and we will be able to enable them right now. We can automatically have the system start on a job. We can choose which job we want to start on. We can also have different ways of managing errors. So we can either give access or not to the skip button in case an error happens in the fastening. We can manage those steps in a very different and flexible way. We can monitor and assign the 16 input and 16 outputs exactly the way we want. We have access here to where do we want to save the fastening data? Do we want to save it on the controller or do we want to save it on the micro SD card? Which data do we want to save? Do we want to save everything or do we want only to save the target torque and converted torque? Is that enough for us? We can choose this way. Barcode management is where we will be able to assign different barcodes to the Oops, let me make it clear again. Barcode is where we will be able to assign different barcode to presets or model. Network information. So this is where we can set the network. We can share that. So in that case, we'll be able to save this data and copy it to other controllers. And at the bottom here, we have some system information. We can change a password, change the language, change the date and time. So coming back to the setting of the tools, I will make it in a way that we can have an error signal. So in that case, I will set up a minimum angle, 300 degrees, and uh, I will set it up for the angle head tool, which is this one. So I will, we have here a 720 degrees um, max angle. So we, we, we will have an error as soon as we reach 720 degrees. So let's see how the tool behaves in that case. I will for now disable the jobs, go back to operation. And if we have an error, it pops up here. And what it does as well is it will show on the screen of the tool. We have an error signal. We have the type of error that happened displayed on the screen as well. So the operator know what happened and what was wrong during that specific operation. So it's again, a guidance for the operator. And now let's look at the jobs. So let's go back here and allow the jobs to work. So with job and now job manager. So once again, the job is going to be allowing us to have the tools work together. And I've created this demo job here. 
and we can edit it. And what we can see right away on the top left is the different type of information that's available for setting different steps. So we have fastening, which is where we will be able to select which preset we want to use. So it's a fastening step. We can wait for an input signal until we move to the next step. We can send an output signal as soon as the previous step was reached. We can have a delay and display a message as well. We can here change the name of the job uh, in here, rename. So we'd be able to change the name of the job to match what's the name of the workstation or the part. So now let's look at the different steps. So I will zoom back out and we'll have access to the different steps here. So let's go to step one, fastening. So for the step one fastening, we will use this tool, which is the pistol grip tool. We will make two rundown using preset number one. You see here on the bottom right, the picture of an engine. It can be the picture of the part. And I swear the SD card comes as its second role. It's not only data saving, but it also allows us to carry file to the controller. And in that case, it's a picture of the part itself. So why do we need a picture of the part? It's again for operator guidance. We see here the picture of the part. We can assign, in that case, the position one. You see that now position one is blinking. And we can just move it anywhere we want on the part. If we want to move it to the right side, we just click and point the finger where is fastening number one. We can change the radius to make it wider or tighter. We can change the width of the line as well to make it thinner or larger. We can change the color of waiting position, which is where the next fastening position is. We can change the OK and not OK colors as well. So we can adapt to the color of the part itself or the color coding of the factory. If we want to have the display of the whole picture, we put down the menu and we can now have access to the whole picture and point again where we want position one to be uh, made. Once it's done, we can move to the next position. One by one, we will do that for all of the positions that will be here on this part. So now position two, I can move position two anywhere I want. I will leave it here for the example sake, but you can see that this is again going to be a real guidance for the operators. So, okay. So this is our first step as a job. Second step is going to be displaying this message, which is to take the angle head tool. We can also insert an image at that point. We can insert different type of information that the customer, the operator, sorry, will have to look at. We can then determine how long we want this message to be displayed. So here we will display it for two seconds. And after this message was displayed for two seconds, we will have another fastening step with, in that case, the angle head type of tool for two screws as well, also using preset one. So I'm going to save. Home. And now we can start the job. So let's start it and see how it looks. So let's open this job. And now we see directly on the screen, 
the part with the position one that's waiting to be done. So I'm going to show you how the tools look like. And you will see here another point of interest for this job. So you remember that for the first position one and two, we need to use the pistol grip tool. So the pistol grip is going to be allowed to work. You can see that it's blinking green. It's possible to work with it. And on the angle head tool, the angle head is blinking yellow. And if I press the trigger, the tool is not starting. So it's a way to prevent the operators to pick up the wrong tool and use it, use it for this fastening one and two. So I have in that case to use the pistol grip to make these two fastening positions. So let's make this happen. Fastening one, okay. Fastening two, okay as well. We displayed the message to take the angle head tool. And now in that case, the pistol grip tool is locked. It cannot start while the angle head will be able to start. So let's take the angle head and make those two fastenings. Fastening one, okay. Fastening two, okay. Job, okay. So it's information that's displayed on the screen. That's also the information that's sent on the network so that we can see on the network that the job was complete and properly done. Then we can come back to the first position, either automatically or once again, wait for an input signal to allow us to do the next job. So this is in condition that everything went fine. So let's look at if there is an error happening during the job. So I will make those fastening okay here. First fastenings are okay. And this is where I'll have a mistake. I will reach the maximum angle, 720 degrees, and we'll see what happens. We have, in that case, an error signal, and this is where we will be able to manage it different ways. We can, at that time, either stop the job and we have to start another part. We can reset this position for from the IO or from the screen, or we can skip it again from the IO or from the screen itself. So what I do here is just skip it from the controller, come back to the picture mode, make the last fastening okay. Fastening okay. So the last fastening was okay, but despite that, the job was declared not good, obviously because one of the fastening was not made properly during the whole job. So we want to know that something went wrong during the job and through the data and the data collection, we will be able to spot which fastening position went wrong. So these are, this is a good overview of the battery tools. Now you may have different questions that you, you want to ask. So feel free to write them in the chat box and we'll be able and happy to answer them right away. Keep in mind that if you need or if you want um, more personalized um, workshop for
for either a real application or for learning more about the tools. We are here and we'll be happy as well to hold privatized workshops for you. So please write your question in the chat and Tom will be happy to read them out loud so we can answer them right away. Okay, Adrian, so we've got a few questions. Um, the first one is, uh, is the software an application or does the customer have to install the program? So the software, same for the battery tools as well as for the Cordy tools. The software is a program that needs to be installed on the computer. Okay, and the next question from Wolfgang is, uh, why is the display still blinking at the tool? This is because um, the display here is not blinking. This is just a matter of camera reading the, the screen, just like when you watch the news and you see some computer screen blinking. Same uh, idea, it's just a matter of camera frequencies. Um, the tool screen is not blinking in real life. Okay, and the uh, next question from Juan is, uh, will the tools have positioning recognition? That's a very good question. Here, what we see on the battery tools is, let me stop that. What we see on the battery tools is the possibility to display the part and tell and guide the operator which position they need to go to. This is a guidance tool. For the battery tools, this is not a um, positioning tool. But what's possible is for battery tools as well as the Cordy tools to communicate with our positioning system. And in that case, it will enhance even more the quality approach of the assembly where the positioning system and the controllers once more either coded or for battery, we'll be able to communicate together and indicate I'm on position one, I need to use this specific preset. I'm on position two, I need to use this specific preset. And we'll be able to this way make a sequencing, make sure that each screw is properly fastened in the sequence with the right amount of torque within the right angle. And in that case, when you have those tools combined with the positioning system, it's a foolproof assembly, uh, a foolproof assembly system. Okay, and the uh, next question is from Mark. Uh, how many tools can be used with one controller? So with the battery tools, it's up to eight tools at the same time linked to the controller. So up to eight tools at the same time can work while connected to one single controller. Okay, and that uh, looks to be all the questions. Okay, well, thank you very much everyone for attending. If you have other questions, feel free to write them to my email address as you see here. I will invite you as well for our next webinar. And our next webinar will be focused on hand tools and it's basically going to help us select the hand tool that is appropriate for each different um, applications. So we'll have a review of click, breakover, and come over type of tools, and what are the advantages of each type of tool for each type of application. So this webinar will be held on February 18th. So feel free to register. You will receive the links very shortly and feel free also to share this link with anybody who you think would be interested in this webinar is going to be uh, held by myself again so i'm looking forward to see you there on february 18th and in the meantime i'm thanking you again for joining us for this session and the previous one and i'm looking forward to hear from you very soon thank you everyone have a nice day